Before we get into today's build, just a quick heads up, there is a limited time 50% discount running on Code Grid Pro. You can use the coupon code in the description or head to the link to get half of your first billing cycle. The offer ends this week, so if you have been considering joining, now is a good time. Alright, let's talk about today's video. You have probably seen this site making the rounds recently. Really solid work by Off Brand Studio. I actually tried recreating one of the effects from this site, this interactive fluid masking animation in one of the recent videos. But the site had plenty of other interesting touches too and one in particular really stood out to me. This bold, clean block reveal text animation. It's the kind of effect that's slowly coming back into trend and it reminded me of something I built like 7 years ago on this channel. Back then, my approach was outdated and way more complicated than it needed to be. But now that split text is freely available and far easier to use, I thought it would be worth revisiting the concept and rebuilding it the right way. So in this video, we are going to build this block reveal text animation inside a Next.js project but not just a one-off effect. We'll create a fully reusable component that can be dropped anywhere across your site. You just wrap your text with it and everything else is handled under the hood. The effect is going to be completely customizable. You can decide whether it plays on scroll or write on load. You'll also be able to tweak the delay, block color, stagger amount and duration all through simple props. We'll power this with GSAP, scroll trigger and split text. And once set up, the component is ready to use across sections, pages or let's just say the entire website. If you'd like to see more builds like this in Next.js, don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. While recording this video, I've already created a fresh Next.js app using Create Next app and it's up and running locally. You can see it on the other side here. Before we start writing any code, let's take a moment to install the dependencies we'll need for this build. First of all, I'll open a new terminal window and install three packages, Lenis for smooth scrolling, GSAP for animation and the GSAP React package so we can use the new use GSAP hook easily inside our components. Once that's installed, I'll go ahead and close the terminal and start with some quick cleanup. Let's open the global CSS file and remove everything inside just so we can start fresh without any leftover styles from the boilerplate. I'll do the same for page model CSS file, clearing out all the default CSS from there as well. Now inside the home page file, I'll clean up all the default imports. We also don't need the boilerplate HTML that comes with the template. I'll get rid of that too since we'll be adding our own content in the next steps. Before we write any HTML, let's also prepare the assets we are going to use. I'll open up the public directory and paste in 4 images that I downloaded from Unsplash. We'll use these images later across different sections of the layout just to make the visuals more interesting as we scroll through. And that's it. Everything is set up now. Let's start defining the structure of the page. Just to save some time, I've gone ahead and added some basic HTML to the page. It's a scroll based layout with a navigation bar at the top followed by a sequence of full screen sections. Each section either has a background image, a headline or a short paragraph, just enough structure to build out our animation flow. Instead of writing all of this manually, I thought it would make more sense to drop it directly so we can spend more time on the actual animation logic. Let me quickly walk you through what's here. There is a nav element at the top and then we have a hero section with a background image and a heading that's followed by a paragraph section, then a full screen image banner, then another heading section, another image, a short CTA paragraph and finally one last section to close things out. So that gives us a complete scroll experience with a mix of visual and text based content. Now before we move into styling, let's quickly add smooth scrolling to the page using Lenis. Lenis is a lightweight scroll engine that replaces the browser's default scroll with a much smoother, more refined motion. It adds easing to scroll behavior which makes animations feel more fluid and polished. To set it up, I'll import the react wrapper for Lenis at the top of the file. This gives us a special component we can use directly in our layout. Then just before our main content begins, I'll add this component and pass in the root prop. It tells Lenis to take control of all the scrolling on the page from the top level down. And just like that, smooth scrolling is now active. Alright, let's move into the CSS and start styling everything. First, I'll bring in a custom font from Google Fonts. This is the main typeface we'll be using across the entire page. After that, I've defined a few CSS variables for the color palette. These are just tones we'll be using throughout the layout. Things like background colors, text colors, accent colors. So having them as variables makes it easier to stay consistent later on. 
Next, I've done a quick reset. I'll remove default margins and paddings and set everything to use water box sizing. Then for the body, I'll apply our imported font and set the background color using one of the variables we just defined. Images are styled to always fill their containers and scale proportionally. This way, background images won't stretch or distort, they'll always cover the section cleanly. Now for the text styles, both the headings and paragraphs are set to use uppercase letters with bold weight and tight spacing. This gives them a sharp editorial feel that fits the overall visual tone we are going for. Then we have the navigation styling. The nav is positioned at the top of the page and fixed in place so it stays visible as you scroll. It's spaced evenly and styled with blend mode so it inverts depending on the background behind it, creating high contrast whether it's over light or dark sections. Now let's move into the section styles. Its section fills the full screen and everything is centered both horizontally and vertically. We have hidden the overflow just to prevent any content from spilling out of bounds during animation. There is a background image layer inside each section, positioned behind everything else. This is the image that fills the screen for sections like the hero and banners. For the headings and paragraphs inside each section, I have set a fixed width so that the text doesn't stretch edge to edge. This keeps it feeling structured and readable, especially on larger screens. Some sections like the intro, services and outro use a bold accent color for the heading text. This ties into the color variables we set up earlier and helps those sections stand out visually. Now let's go over the block related classes. These are the ones we'll be using later when we'll animate lines of text. First, we have a wrapper around each line of text. This is what we'll be animating. Each of these wrappers are styled to take up exactly as much space as the line itself and set in line with the flow of the text. Then inside each wrapper, we insert a second element. This is the actual block that will slide across the text to create the masking effect. It's positioned over the text line and set to animate smoothly across it. We are not animating the text directly. We are animating this overlaid block to reveal the line underneath. That's what gives us the clean line by line block wipe effect later on. Each block is also set up with transforms enabled so the animation stays performant especially when we are triggering it on scroll. Finally, I've added some basic responsive rules at the bottom just to make sure the text scales down on smaller screens and sections have a bit of padding on mobile. The layout stays consistent regardless of screen size and that's everything for the base styling. Next, we'll start building the reusable animation component and wire up the logic for block-based text reveals. I'll go into the source directory and create a new folder called components. This is just to help organize our code pattern since we'll be building a custom component that we'll reuse across the page. Inside that folder, I'll create a new file and name it copy.jsx. This component is going to be the core of our animation system. It's where we'll eventually use gsap and split text to animate lines of text as they enter the screen. But for now, we are just setting up the basic structure. So the first thing I'll do inside this file is enable client-side rendering because later on, we'll be using DOM APIs and scroll trigger which require the component to run in the browser. Then, I'll import React and define a simple functional component called copy. For now, this component will just return its children exactly as they are passed in, nothing else. There is no animation yet, we are just scaffolding things, so we have a clean starting point. Once that's ready, I'll switch back to the home page. At the top of the file, I'll input the copy component we just created. Then I'll start wrapping all of the key text elements inside this component. That includes the heading in the intro, services and outro sections, and the paragraphs inside about and CTA sections. So essentially, anywhere on the page we are having copy that we plan to animate later, we wrap it in copy component. This step is important because it gives us full control over those elements from one place. Instead of writing animation code separately for each heading or paragraph, we can now handle all of them through this one chat component. And since the component doesn't do anything visual yet, you won't see any changes in the browser. Everything still looks same, but the structure underneath is now ready for animation. This also makes our code cleaner and easier to manage, especially once we start layering in scroll triggers, staggering and masking effects. Alright, now that the copy component is connected and in use across the page, let's go back into it and start building the actual animation logic. The first thing I'll do here is import useRef from React. We'll be using multiple refs in this component to target our DOM elements, store the split lines and handle the animation blocks so getting useRef in place is the first step. Next, I'll import gsap along with a few extra tools we'll need. We'll bring in gsap itself, the split text plugin and scroll trigger. 
and also import use this app hook. This hook is what we'll use to safely run our animation code inside a functional component. Once that's done, I'll go ahead and register both plugins with JSAP. This step is required anytime you are using external plugins like split text or scroll trigger. We need to explicitly tell JSAP that these are available before we can use them in our timelines. Now we are ready to define the component properly. Inside the function, I'll set up a few props. By default, the component will accept the children. That's whatever heading or paragraph gets passed in. But I'll also define a few optional props to help customize the animation behavior. We'll have a toggle for whether the animation runs on scroll, a delay before the animation starts, the color of the block that will wipe across the line, how much to stagger between each line, and how long each part of the animation should take. This will make the component flexible so we can reuse it in different parts of the layout with slight variations if needed. Then I'll define a few refs. The first one is for container which will point to our outer wrapper that holds the animated content. We'll also set up three other refs to keep track of internal parts of the animation. Split refs to store the split text instances, lines to store each line of text, and blocks to store the block elements that will animate over each line. Now, I'll also update the return statement. Instead of just returning the children directly, I'll wrap everything inside a div, assign our container ref to it, and add a custom data attribute. This wrapper is what we'll use as the base element for the animation. Everything inside it will be split into lines and animated later. Finally, I'll define the use this app hook. This is where all of our animation setup will happen. We'll pass in the container as the scope so GSAP knows where to look and also provide a list of dependencies. These are the props that might change between different uses of the component like the block color, delay, duration and so on. So we include them here to make sure the hook reacts to any updates properly. And that's the full setup for now. In the next step, we'll build the line splitting logic and generate the animated blocks that will reveal each line as it comes into view. The first thing I'll do here is add a quick check to make sure the container exists, meaning the element we are targeting has actually been rendered on the page. This is just a safety step. In React, sometimes a hook might run before the component fully mounts, so if we try to access an element too early, it can throw an error. So we simply stop execution if the container isn't ready yet. Next, I'll reset all the internal storage we'll be using. This includes three things, the list of line animation blocks, the actual text lines we'll animate, and the instances created by split text. Clearing these out gives us a clean starting point every time this runs, and it avoids leftovers from previous renders if the component ever remounts. Now I'll define an empty list that will store the actual elements we want to animate. This could be a single element, like one heading, or it could be multiple paragraphs, depending on how this component is used on the page. To handle both cases, I'll check the outer container for a specific attribute. If that attribute is present, it means we have wrapped multiple child elements, so we'll grab all of them and treat each one individually. If the attribute isn't there, we assume it's just one single block of text and we'll treat the container itself as the one we want to animate. This gives the component flexibility to handle both single elements and groups of text elements without needing separate logic. Next, I loop through each of those elements and apply the split text plugin to them. This plugin breaks each block of text into separate lines based on how the text wraps on the screen, not based on character count. Each line gets its own container and we assign it a class name so we can easily apply this style we defined earlier in the CSS. Once a block is split into lines, I'll store that instance for later so we can clean it up if the component ever unmounts. Now I'll go through each of these lines and start building the reveal structure for animation. For every single line of text, I'll create a wrapper element that goes around it. That wrapper gives us layout control, we can center it, animate over it, and treat it as a block. I'll insert that wrapper directly before the line and move the line inside it so it's fully contained. Then, inside the same wrapper, I'll add a second element. This is going to be the actual reveal block. This block sits on top of the text line and is the part we'll animate. It slides in, wipes across the text, and then slides out again to reveal what's underneath. We'll also assign it a background color using the value we passed into the component earlier. This lets us use different block colors for different sections if we want to. Once all of those blocks are added, I'll set the initial state for both the lines and the blocks. Every line of text starts out completely invisible, and every block starts with its horizontal scale set to zero meaning they are fully collapsed and not visible on the screen. We also anchor their animation origin to the left side so that when they expand, they animate from left to right. This setup is what creates the classic block reveal effect where the block wipes across and fades the line in underneath it. With that, all the preparation is done. Our text is split into lines. Each line is wrapped and each one has its own block ready to animate. In the next step, we'll define the animation timeline that brings those blocks to life and control whether that animation plays right away or when the section scrolls into view. So inside the animation hook, the first thing I'll do is create a small function that builds the animation timeline for each individual line. 
This function will take three inputs, the block element, the text line underneath it, and the index number of that line. The index helps us trigger the animation so that each line plays slightly after the one before it. Inside the function, I'll create a new GCEP timeline, then I'll add the first animation where the block expands from left to right. We are animating the horizontal scale of block from zero to full, and this is what creates that wipe on effect across the line. Next, once the block is fully expanded and is covering the entire line, I'll make the text underneath it visible. This gives the illusion that text is being rebuilt by the block. Then I'll right away flip the origin of the block to the other side to the right. This is important because now we'll animate the block in reverse, scaling it back from right to left. This creates a clean wipe off effect where the block disappears and leaves the fully visible text behind. By putting all of this inside a function, we can reuse this exact sequence for every line we want to animate, whether it's a heading or a paragraph. Once the animation function is ready, I'll add a condition to check whether the animation should play on scroll or right away. If scroll triggering is enabled, we'll loop through each line and block on the page. For each one, I'll create a new animation timeline using the function we just built and then immediately pause the timeline. We are doing this so the animation doesn't run right away. Instead, we'll connect it to a scroll trigger. Then, I'll create a new scroll trigger for the whole container section. This trigger listens for when the section reaches a certain position on the screen. In this case, when the top of the section hits about 90% down the viewport. Once that happens, we tell GSAP to play the timeline for each line, one by one, with a slight stagger between them. This setup makes the animation feel scroll driven. It only activates when the section comes into view. If scroll triggering is turned off, I'll skip the trigger and just play the animation right away for each line as the component renders. This gives us flexibility. We can use the component either as a scroll driven or as a static animation that plays on load. Finally, at the very end of the hook, I'll define a cleanup routine. This function runs when the component unmounts or if it gets re-rendered and if it helps clean up everything we set up earlier. First, I'll revert all the line splitting we applied with split text, restoring the original text content and removing the temporary line containers. Then, I'll loop through the extra wrapper elements we created around each line. For each one, I'll unwrap it by moving the original line back to its parent and removing the wrapper completely. This keeps the DOM clean and prevents memory issues, especially if we are animating the same component multiple times. And with that, the entire animation setup is complete. If we preview the site now, you'll see that everything is working. The blocks animate in, wipe across the lines and reveal the text as you scroll. Now that everything is functional, let's take a moment to customize it a bit. I'll go back to the home page and pass a custom color to the block animation in certain sections. For the intro, services and outro, I'll add a color prop that matches the red accent tone we defined earlier in CSS. This is done by adding a single prop to the animation component, no need to modify the logic at all. For the about and CTS sections, I'll leave them with the default black color just to add a bit of variation as we scroll down. And with that change, you will see the reveal blocks now match the theme of each section perfectly. Every section animates with its own tone but still follows the same animation rhythm. The animation component is fully dynamic, scroll powered, reusable and configurable. And the results will polished and cohesive. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.